Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to you all. We are blessed to have two really awesome instrumentalists visiting with us this morning. You all know Allison Judd on the flute, and this is Therese Gunn on the violin. At this time, we'll quiet ourselves as we begin worship. Beautiful, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning on this beautiful Mother's Day Sunday. We do have flowers today for all of our ladies, and um, they will be given out after service today. We want to welcome you here with us today, as well as those joining online. And a special welcome to anyone who might be worshiping with us for the first time. Raise your hand if you're a first-time visitor today so that we can welcome you and give you a name tag. Good deal. Well, we're glad to have everybody. A reminder to please um, take the red attendance pad and pass it down so that we can have a record that you're here and uh, know um, how to reach those who we are missing today. And as Sally's been saying every week, welcome home. It's good to be, good to be, it's home. Good to be home. And exciting news is that we will be back in our church building very soon now. Yay. Yay. The flooring is here and the installation is underway. The grand reopening as well as our Welcome Home Sunday plans are being developed as we speak. Firm dates and times will be announced um, as soon as we're a little bit further along in the renovation project. And as you guys know, even without our church building, we have been a very active church. There are a lot of events and programs and things going on um, weekly and monthly. So to stay up to date, please pick up a monthly newsletter. We keep them outside the lobby um, during worship times or visit our website at sharpumc.org. And don't forget to read your uh, eSharp emails because they're full of details of all the awesome things going on. And now as we prepare our hearts for worship, let us pray. 
O oh Lord, we come before you this morning with praise and thanksgiving. Open our minds to what you have to teach us. Open our hearts to your love and enable us to love you in a new and more profound way. Open our souls to the joy that can only be found in you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is the Lily of the Valley. Let's stand and sing all three verses together. Please join me for our sharp vision statement found in the bulletin. We present Christ, we develop disciples, and we care for each other and the world. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another till we get it right. Say, welcome home. And the response is, it's, it's good, good to be home. home. Welcome home.
Today we have our lay leader, Dan Thomas, to speak with us and giving us a building update. Glad to have you, Dan. Glad you're here. Thank you for all the work you've done to kind of help set things up, too, every single Sunday, you and others. Well, Tina gave you the update already. It's okay. Um, yes, they have started. The, the flooring is laying in boxes in many places, so they have started on, on replacing the floors throughout the area, as you can imagine. Uh, it's not going to be a simple job because things have been moved out of the way, and then they have to be put over on the floor, and then they have to be shifted around while this is going. But it is, it is good to see progress. And... Uh, the, the group that's putting in this flooring did the flooring at my house, too, so I think they will do an excellent job. So, anyway, uh, any questions that might come from the audience about what's happening? The, the ceiling's already been put back in. Um, there's still some issues related to the kitchen, but that's going to be a project that will kick in after the rest of the flooring gets put down, as far as I know. Dave Pittman. He's the one who actually knows what's going on. Um, so if you actually have a question about what's happening, go by the church and look and see what's happening because uh, I can always use a little bit of help at different times. No questions? We're good. Thank you. gotten out that it's freezing in here. <laughs> I don't know if uh, that's where some people have gone today, but uh, we're going to open doors. I have contacted three people on campus and to let them know they could probably save some money if they turn it up a little bit, but uh, 
you know, being uh, a little warmer in here, but we'll just have to deal with it. Bring your blankets. Someone even joked about, you know, BYOB, bring your own blanket. And so, okay, we'll, we'll have church that way. Um, I also want to mention the fact that uh, never have I had a week go by where the church members were quoting scripture to me. Um, it happened a lot this week. Uh, I guess people are inspired by the plank that was in my eye uh, that I need not worry about the speck in somebody else's. Um, once that speck was taken out Tuesday, uh, I have uh, made a, a wonderful recovery. Things are quite well now, uh, considering that last Sunday I still had it in me, uh, so uh, it's good to have that taken out. You have before you another card. I hope that it is of concern and interest and that when we return to the building that we have a firm connection of what it means to be the church. I think we've discovered some of that being over here for so long. I think we really have. But we're going to return, and that day is coming. In fact, our Council on Ministries meeting this Wednesday is the sole focus of how we're going to work when we get back in. And so part of that getting back in is the preparations. I think the biggest preparation that we can make is to develop a prayer ministry. That is the ask of this one that you, if you have an interest in being a part of a, a prayer ministry, I invite you to write your name and number down. And so that we can follow up in the next several weeks, we can begin meeting together as a group and begin praying for our church and our community and our world. And so I invite you, I hope many of you will respond that we can find a time to get together to do that. I also ask again that you put your prayer down. Uh, when you think about the mission and ministry and purpose of the church, what is your prayer? What is it that you think we really ought to be focusing in on? <clears throat> and I certainly uh, ask you if you want to just leave it in your chairs or put it in the basket that's on the table outside. Either way, we want to collect those, especially, especially um, if you're interested in being a part of that prayer ministry. Lord, may your great commission not become our great omission. The great commission is found in Matthew 28 and that's what's printed on the back of this card. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. In many ways this is the purpose of the church. And how can we do that? As we pray for individuals, we have a long list. Aaron and Mike, Carity and Martha Rollison, and Martha Rollison's neighbor, uh, Jane Breckfield. Jane, it's always good to see you here with us. We want to continue to pray for you. Uh, Terry as well. We want to remember prayers. Uh, we also want to remember the family of uh, friends of the Bolano family and the Nelson family. Sometimes Sundays are awkward because we know the reality of Mother's Day. Some days our mothers can be wonderful. Some days they have better days. Some of us have the wonderful, we've had wonderful long many days with mothers who have done what, done us well. Not all of us. But nevertheless, the love that we would experience is the love of God. That God's love is what we are inspired with. It's God's love that we empowers us. And so I pray that... Uh, we think about uh, not just a mother's love, but God's mothering love. Jesus said, if, uh, as he prayed over Jerusalem, that I would gather you up as a mother hen. 
God has a love. That is like a mother should be and a father. Let's thank God for that love that sustains us. I hope that you'll write in here in the prayer time um, what comes to your mind and heart. Because we're going to go back home. Home is where we find ourselves with God. And we're going to be in our building. And there are others that will be looking to find that home as well. May we be ready. Let's pray. God, it's real easy for me to come up and, and tell you what's, what's on my heart. What are my concerns in, in my world? But God, it's not always easy for me to open up and listen to hear what you, what's on your heart. And that you would have me to listen and to hear. And to know your will in my life. Here we are as a church, oh God, that we've been displaced for a long time. And maybe there's some things that we've forgotten. Or maybe there's some things we've taken for granted. Or maybe there's some things that we've just have become knowing about our own concerns. God, open up our heart and stretch it. open up our heart and fill it with more of your love and that we might be able to share that with those that we meet and, and maybe today as we think about our homes and think about our families that we begin there God I thank you for all those who have experienced uh, your love within their growing up I thank you God that there are those places and where it was your love that reigned. It was your love that made it a home. God, may you continue to work in us as a church that we're about making home, not just for ourselves, but for all your people, and that they would experience that love. And Lord, so wherever we are right here in this place or at home watching this, that you and your love begins to move and shape our hearts and lives. And that when you tell us that you, you have something for us to do, that we go and do it. And when you have something for us to say, that we would go and say it. And may it be said and may it be done in a love for you. Knowing that we can't do it on our own, oh God, we pray. And by your Holy Spirit, may you come and empower us to be your church in this community, in this day and time. Give us a song in our heart. Give us words of love. And give us a passion to build up your church. For we know this world needs it. So we pray in the name of the one who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would our ushers now come forward that we might continue our act of worship and to give unto God what is God's.
our children come forward for children's time. say something like over and over and over again so that you, you get it down. So my, my mom used to um, say some things to me and uh, one of them was she would start counting. <laughs> one, two, and, and, I, and that meant that I needed to do what the last thing was, you know, and get in there. So get into the kitchen or come here. She used to say that to me. Is anything y'all think? So sometimes parents repeat things. I don't think it's because they've gotten old. It's because they want you to learn something. And they repeat it over and over and over again. My mom repeated a lot of things. So on this Mother's Day, I'm, I'm thinking about my mama and all the things that she repeated to get me to, to do. Um, one of them was about my sister's. <clears throat> and she would say often, if you don't like your sisters, at least act like it. And she said it over and over and over again. So she wanted me to love my sisters. She wanted me to act like it. So, can y'all think of anything that you, parents repeat? Yeah, what, what is, is something that you think about? What does she say? Stop. Stop is a good word. Stop is a good word to repeat because you need to not do it anymore, right? That stop and a stop sign is a different kind of stop. But, you know, the stop sign says the car better stop, right? And when mama says stop, it probably means we stop. God, thank you for a love that repeats and repeats and repeats. May your direction for our lives help us to follow you. Amen. All right. Take one and one to give away. Or you can take, a, take one and take a bunch to give away. Whatever you want to do. Man, your hand, that hand is getting bigger and bigger. That's good. Oh, well, come on. Is now the green blade rises. If you'll
you'll recognize this tune. Uh, let's stand and sing verses one, three, and four. <laughs> It's not often that I miss two Sundays in a row, but uh, as you saw me last Sunday, I was not comfortable. Um, I'm glad to have this rock out of my eye. I have said rock, maybe because that describes it best, but it was a calcium growth, so it wasn't. Uh, so I think one of my uh, best steps forward is that I'm going to wear glasses outside more often than I have so that uh, things won't fly into my eye and, and stuff doesn't happen. We are still in Easter. We are still talking about uh, Easter resurrection. And I want to, uh, the Gospel of John uh, ends up with this wonderful story. Uh, I'm beginning with verse 14, uh, after chapter 21, verse 14. Now, this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. I want to, uh, uh, there's something always important about threes in the Bible uh, when something is repeated. So if you read something that's once, it's fairly common. If you read something that repeats itself twice, then it begins that it's important. But if you find something that's said three times, then pay attention. Listen. Don't miss this point when something is done three times in a row. I recall the times when a mother said, do I have to repeat myself? And she might have said that more than just a few times, too. Because repetition is helpful. We learn through practice, repeating something again and again. With the repetition, it becomes a habit. And with some time, habits become quite natural. My mom would say, you can help too. After my sisters had already made their way into the kitchen, there was instructions for me as well. But my favorite momism that she probably said more than any was, Stephen, if you don't like your sisters, at least act like it. My mom was an only child, so getting along was really important for her. Repetition. So now I read the rest of the scripture. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to, you're a, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your own hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Did you hear how many threes are connected in this portion of scripture? Now, this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples. Jesus asking Peter three times, do you love me? Peter's responding three times, you know that I love you. And Jesus responding three times, feed my sheep. When you read John's gospel and come to the end of chapter 20, you feel like the author is finishing up the story. But chapter 21 comes along as if it's an add-on, as if it's an addendum, so that we must ask the question, was something forgotten? Was it added by another author? Or, for some, is it the summation of the gospel message? This last chapter puts a laser focus on the mission and purpose for the followers of Jesus Christ and the church, the body of Christ. Some sermons could spend some time on Peter's need for forgiveness after denying Jesus three times. Today, let's consider what Jesus said even more often than that. The latest polls show that 29% of the U.S. citizens believe in astrology. The zodiac sign with the advice based on when your birthday is. I wonder how many of you could name your zodiac sign. Aries the ram, Taurus the bull. I was disappointed to come across Leo the lion, for my dog is not named after astrology, but after the adventure scientist Leonardo. In fact, it you ought to know that he found his way outside of the house. He helped himself open up the sliding glass door and came down to where Tony and Jim in my office noticed, is that Leo walking down the street there? <clears throat> There's Libra, Aquarius, and others. That's more than all the Baptists, Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Church of God, Presbyterian, non-denominationals, all the Protestants, in other words, all the non-Catholics combined. Witchcraft has grown from 8,000 believers in 1990 to 130,000 a day. Mindfulness is now the word that has supplanted spirituality, which supplanted the term religious affiliations. Dealing with life stresses, more and more people are finding their religion, their spirituality, their need for mindfulness at CrossFit gyms, soul cycle spin classes, or just quiet time at the coffee shop or at the lake. Many are quite satisfied in the comfort of their own home, in their favorite chair with a book, watching the latest TV series, or playing internet games. The human condition will be a continual search 
for places and spaces where people go to find community, seeking connections that enhance their love and meaning of life. More and more people are searching to find their peace outside the church. More and more are expecting that they will have to look elsewhere because the news that they hear about the church is toxic, abusive, and judgmental. Jesus was helping Peter to focus on what was going to be important. The most important message that Jesus has for those who are willing to follow him. My parents tried very hard to bring culture into my life. It was kind of hard for a young boy that loved rock music more than classical music. But there was one musical among a couple of others that stuck and have stuck in my mind for all my days. Not the whole thing, but parts of it. In fact, today the music is kind of all seeming to fit together. Terry, I don't know if you were feeling some kind of music that might go along with what this is. There are times I wish I could just go ahead and sing it. <laughs> but it asks the question, do you love me? And she responds, do I what? Do you love me? Do I love you? With our children's getting married and the trouble in this town, you're upset, you want out, go inside, go lay down. Maybe it's indigestion. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Do you love me? You fool. I know. But do you love me? Do I love you? For 25 years I've washed your clothes, cooked your meals, cleaned your house, given you children, milked the cow. After 25 years, why talk about love right now? The first time I met you was on our wedding day. I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous, so was I. But my father and my mother said we'd learn to love each other. So I am asking you, do you love me? I'm your wife, I know, but do you love me? Do I love him? For 25 years I've lived with him, fought with him, starved with him. For 25 years my bed is his. If that's not love, what is? Then you love me? I suppose I do. And I suppose I love you too. And together they sang. It doesn't change a thing, but even so, after 25 years, it's nice to know. Today, people are yearning to know if there's someone who loves them. Jesus asked the question, do you love me? To know what most important is. Jesus usually ends with his most important message. Time after time and again when he meets somebody. He says follow me. Even today my mother has hopes that my grammar will improve. I believe there are corrections in my use of the word good and well. When my sister and I were recently there together, we were playfully competing with each other as we were placing puzzle pieces together as fast as we could. <coughs> my mother looked over at my wife, Melanie, and said, 
They know they're adults, don't they? <laughs> Love never gives up. Love never gives up. Love is always nurturing and the need for it is to be repeated. No wonder love seeks to shape, to correct, and influence. My mother hasn't given up on trying to shape my life. Jesus seeks to do the same for me and for the world. And Jesus says it simply when he repeats it again and again and again. Follow me. You and I are getting closer to returning to our church building. And we have an opportunity to show the community that Sharp is different. To follow Jesus is to be shaped and influenced by a great love. Whether after 25 years or even 63 years, it's nice to know. May we follow Jesus so all may know. And when they know, they know that they are loved and they know that they are home. In essence, Jesus is saying, follow me for you will find your home. And he said it again and again and again. So all would find home in God's love. Peter, church, Do you love me? May we as a church help people find their way home. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we can finish our worship, it is a time to answer the call of following. Follow me. Tend my sheep. <coughs> You've never made a profession of faith. You've never been baptized. God calls upon you to come and to make that commitment. And if today you wish to join the church and make it your place of family of faith, I invite you to come as we stand and sing our final hymn. Oh, you all are so good. <laughs> so our final hymn is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. We have not sung this since 2014. So if you would like to sit out on the first verse, you can feel um, welcome to listen to the choir sing the first verse. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4 together. And this is in the form of what they call A-A-B-A. -A -A. So verse uh, line 1, line 2, and line 4 are the exact same tune. And then line 3 is a little different.
struggles of life, you are a non-anxious presence. May God's love surround you, where you are a voice of compassion and grace. And may your words repeat often the good news of Jesus Christ so that the world may hear and that they may know there is a God and there is a church called Sharp that loves and seeks to love people.